When importing a 3D object, setting up lighting or changing the camera position. In fact, these are just the most basic steps when working with 3JS, because even though it is very important, but used for setting up 3D space, these steps cannot be directly manipulated into the 3D model. So in this video, through instructions on converting mouse clicks from 2D screen to impact 3D model, we will build a project to plant forests for the desert. In this exercise, I have prepared as follows. Import 3Js into the project, initialize canvas, set up lighting, set up camera, auto rendering, responsive frame, and a function to load the desert model. All these steps have been guided in the previous video. 3D animation scroll with 3Js, everyone can review it. In this video, I will skip it to save everyone's time. Our task in this exercise is to create a direct impact on the 3D model right at the mouse click position. You think the mouse click position is already on the screen? Sorry, but you are wrong. It's like you can put your hand up and block the sun, but that doesn't mean you can actually affect it because it's too far away. You can only affect objects at a certain distance. It's the same here. When you move the mouse on the screen, that only reflects the direction the camera is focused on. It is not a point that we can affect at all. Our task is to rely on the direction of the camera. Add distance from there determine the point that we want to affect. First I will proceed to catch the event when the user clicks on the screen. Use Vector2 to store the 2D coordinates that the mouse is clicking. A 2D coordinate will include the X and Y axis positions. The x-axis position is usually calculated by dividing the current position by the total screen size. For example, the screen size is 500 pixels. The lowest position we can click is at 0 pixels. Divide 0 by 500 to get the minimum value of the x-axis. And the maximum position the mouse can click is at 500 pixels to the left. 500, 500. So the maximum value of the x-axis will be 1. However, the x-axis in vector 23JS requires a magnitude from minus 1 to 1. So our task is to expand the original return limit. The first problem is that the distance from minus 1 to 1 is 2 units, while the distance from 0 to 1 is only 1 unit. At this point, we just need to multiply the result by 2. At this point, 0 times 2 is still 2, and 1 times 2 is 2. Point, we have a new limit from 0 to 2, 2 units apart. Finally, I just take this result and subtract it from 1. So we have increased the x-axis limit as required. Based on the formula found, the x-coordinate position that the user just clicked in the 2D vector will be equal to the distance of the cursor to the left edge divided by the screen size, then multiplied by 2 and minus 1. So what about the y-axis? Basically, we just need to replace the distance from the mouse pointer to the left with the distance from the mouse pointer to the top divided by the height of the screen and just plug it into this formula. However, there is a problem. By default, according to this formula, the y-axis will have to point down, but the y-axis in vector 2 will point up. So if we set it in the opposite direction, client y is no longer the value we need, but the remaining red part. The remaining red part is equal to the height of the screen minus the yellow area of client y. So with this formula, I just substitute it here, and we have the click position in the 2D vector. That's actually the hardest step. The rest of the steps won't be difficult for you. The next task based on the click location just found is to determine the viewing direction and choose the click location in the 3D environment. All of that is easily solved with Raycaster. When using set from camera, we will set the direction that the camera wants to look at. With the direction value obtained, it is a straight line from the camera position to the click position. The default point click is the position closest to the camera. So when you want to affect the environment in that direction, but at a greater distance, use multiplicular. With the main parameter being the distance from the camera. After getting the position I want to affect in the 3D environment, now I just need to create a function to proceed with planting the tree. In this function, I use the load function to load the 3D tree file that has been prepared in advance. And of course, the position it is added to is the position of the click point. Once done, let's try it out. 
Now when I click right in that direction with the distance of 4 from the camera in the z-axis, we have planted the tree. That's how we will manipulate the 3D model directly. However, in the case of planting trees, sometimes our view is too high, causing the tree to float in the air. So we just need to always set it to be placed at Y position equal to zero to lie right on the ground. So our tree is always planted on the ground. However, in this case, I want to create the effect that the tree will be born exactly where the user just clicked, even if it is in the air. Then fall to the ground. So I will import GSAP to help me with this job. Then instead of directly setting Y to zero, I will keep the original Y value and add it to the 3D space, then use GSAP to change the position of this tree. The Y-axis value will have to move to zero. In one second, it will move slowly as it approaches the ground. This way, I give the user a more enjoyable feeling when operating. It's interesting, right? I have a question for your opinion. From this example, can you plant more types of trees to make our forest more diverse? Let me know your ideas in the comment section of this video. Or create a project about building and arranging your room. Because from here, determining the click position is the most important start of every operation. If everyone wants the next video to continue to be a video about 3Js, please leave a comment to let me know. I will rely on the number of comments on the most interested topic to make the next video. And that's all the content for this video. If you find it interesting, please leave a comment to share with me. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to watch more interesting videos about programming and web design. Thank you very much. See you all in the next video.